on the golden shores of Santa Monica, California, where the waves whispered secrets to the stars, stood a mansion so grand it made the heavens seem within reach. Yet this was not just any mansion, it was a 100-room behemoth of extravagance, a seaside party palace where Hollywood's brightest stars convened for nights of uninhibited revelry. With their laughter echoing like a seductive symphony under the moonlit sky, the so-called Beach House played host to scenes that would make the great Gatsby read like afternoon tea time in a quiet garden. At the heart of this opulent paradise was its queen, actress Marion Davies, a dazzling star in her own right, entwined with the most powerful media mogul of the time, William Randolph Hearst. But their love was not just a romance, it was a creative partnership that gave birth to this architectural wonder. Every inch of the mansion was a love letter to luxury, crafted with an eye for detail so meticulous it bordered on the divine. Yet, in a twist more tragic than Orson Welles' rosebud moment in Citizen Kane, the classic satire of Hearst and Davies, this monument to glamour and excess met an unfathomable end. As the golden age of Hollywood faded into the shadows of World War II, this iconic home to luxury fell to the cold, unfeeling hand of the market and was turned into a parking lot, of all things. In today's episode of Old Money Mansions, we'll describe how this decision was more than just the demolition of a building for profit. It was the end of a legendary era in the City of Angels and the extinguishing of a light that once burned brightly on the shores of Santa Monica, as we describe. Why Los Angeles's most luxurious mansion was demolished. Born on the 3rd of January, 1897, into a close-knit family, Marion Cecilia Doras, who would become the illustrious Marion Davies, early years were a blend of familial warmth and personal challenges. Her father, Bernard J. Duras, a distinguished lawyer and judge, and her mother, Rose Riley, a devoted homemaker, provided a nurturing environment for Marion and her siblings. Despite battling a stutter, Marion's resilient spirit propelled her to leave school and step into the limelight of show business. As a teenager, Marion embarked on her theatrical voyage, joining the ranks of chorus girls. Inspired by her sister, Raina, who had adopted the stage name Davies, Marion too embraced this persona, stepping onto Broadway's glittering stages. Her early career saw her star in the 1917 film Runaway Romany, marking the beginning of a dazzling journey in the entertainment industry. Soon thereafter, Marion's fate intertwined with that of William Randolph Hearst, the fabulously wealthy newspaper tycoon, during her stint in the Ziegfeld Follies. Captivated by her charm, Hearst pledged to elevate her to stardom, establishing a production company dedicated to her craft, and under his patronage, Marion flourished, gracing over 45 films with her presence. However, Marion's ascent was not without its shadows. The untimely demise of film producer Thomas Ince at a party on her lover William Randolph Hearst's yacht cast a pall over her career in 1924. Despite this, Marion continued to captivate audiences, becoming a silent film icon. And off the camera, Marion's heart was as golden as her on-screen personas. Her philanthropy, especially towards children's causes and aspiring actors, mirrored the generosity of her spirit. In 1924, her star shone brightest as theatre owners crowned her queen of the screen. Now, Marion and William Randolph's shared creative vision soon culminated in brainstorming a grand mansion in Santa Monica, in 1926. This architectural marvel, a reflection of their affluence and societal status, was intended to stand as a symbol of their dreams, ambitions, and the love they shared, despite the whispers of scandal and controversy that trailed their union. Thus, in 1926, Marion Davies and William Randolph Hearst were poised on the cusp of architectural history as they sought the perfect architect for their Santa Monica mansion. Amidst heightened anticipation, they breathlessly searched for an architectural visionary capable of encapsulating their love, influence, and the golden era of Hollywood in a landmark that would transcend time, and soon enough, they would find one. In the radiant panorama of Santa Monica's architectural landscape, the inception of the Marion Davies Mansion in 1926 marked the beginning of a remarkable era. Envisioned as an icon of grandeur and sophistication, its genesis was entrusted to architect Julia Morgan, a luminary in creative design at the time. 
Morgan, celebrated for shattering glass ceilings in a then predominantly male-dominated field, had an impressive portfolio of over 700 structures. And her design ethos, characterized by meticulous attention and hands-on involvement, set a high bar for architectural excellence. The mansion's patron, William Randolph Hearst, helped choose Morgan for Davies, drawing on their prior collaboration at the illustrious Hearst Castle. The Santa Monica venture was therefore a further embodiment of Hearst's architectural aspirations, mirroring his deep engagement in the creation of his own San Simeon estate. Now Morgan's architectural blueprint was a masterstroke of elegance and opulence, melding a sprawling 100-room mansion with an exquisitely designed marble pool. Without a doubt, this majestic estate was conceived to be the crown jewel of Santa Monica's Gold Coast, a hub for the Hollywood elite and a nexus for social gatherings of the highest order. Next, the groundbreaking in 1927 heralded the construction phase, intertwining Hearst's vision with Morgan's architectural acumen. This collaboration, although fraught with challenges, was a confluence of Hearst's detailed oversight and Morgan's unparalleled focus on precision culminating in a resplendent symbol of their combined genius. Creatively, the mansion's architectural narrative wove together art deco and Mediterranean motifs, playing out a symphony of styles. The interior echoed the splendor of the art deco movement, featuring a bespoke nightclub that exuded the era's chic and glamour. In contrast, the exterior resonated with Georgian revival influences, showcasing a balanced amalgamation of classical proportions and ancient Greco-Roman aesthetics. Further, the Mediterranean inspiration was palpable in the mansion's expansive layout, reminiscent of a luxurious villa and strategically positioned on a five-acre oceanfront plot. And it boasted amenities befitting an empress, over 100 lavish rooms, tennis courts, guest houses, and an ornate marble swimming pool all resonating with the aura of Hearst's and Davies' distinguished tastes. Now, the interior design, completed in 1929, was a canvas for Davies' preferences, adorned with Tiffany chandeliers and treasures from Hearst's European sojourns. After the completion of the building's construction phase, Marion Davies and William Randolph Hearst soon stood on the cusp of unveiling their architectural masterpiece in Santa Monica. The air buzzed with anticipation for the grand opening, a lavish affair set to redefine opulence. Yet beneath the surface, a question still lingered in their minds. Would the creme de la creme of Santa Monica and Los Angeles embrace the mansion's artistic and cultural splendors, or would their grand vision fall short of the glittering societal expectations? Unveiled with much fanfare in the 1920s by media magnate William Randolph Hearst for actress Marion Davies, the affectionately titled Beach House swiftly became the epicenter of Hollywood's glamorous rendezvous. And Marion Davies, stepping into the mansion, quickly embraced her newfound role as the toast of Hollywood's high society. Indeed, the Beach House under her stewardship instantly transformed into a haven for the who's who of Tinseltown. And these gatherings held within these walls were not just parties, they were the epitome of exclusivity and elegance, drawing the creme de la creme from various industries, with Hollywood's brightest stars always in attendance. At the heart of these lavish festivities was the dining room, repurposed as a celebratory sanctum dedicated to the grand soirees hosted by Davies. The walls and windows, adorned with large-scale photographic scrims, served as silent narrators of the high life. They would showcase an array of A-list guests and snapshots of Davies herself, often captured in joyous moments with her beloved Hearst. And during the early 1930s, Santa Monica found itself in a transformative phase. The city, having enjoyed the nationwide prosperity of the 1920s, saw its population more than double from 15,000 to 32,000. However, the Great Depression struck hard, plummeting employment figures to a mere 1,000 by 1933. Through this economic turmoil, the Davies Mansion remained an unyielding beacon of festivity and resilience, its parties continuing unabated and the mansion's influence on Santa Monica's cultural fabric was undeniable. It wasn't just a residence, it was a cultural icon, instrumental in cementing the city's reputation as a gathering place for the affluent and famous. Thus, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden hue over Santa Monica, the Marion Davies Mansion stood poised on the brink of an era that would etch its name in the annals of Hollywood history. Behind its grand facade, 
Preparations were underway for a series of soirees that would redefine luxury and extravagance. Nestled along the sun-drenched shores of Santa Monica, the Marion Davies Santa Monica Mansion, or simply the Beach House, stood as a symbol of opulence and social magnetism in the 1930s. This magnificent estate, with its sprawling grounds and palatial architecture, played host to the era's most illustrious figures, creating a vibrant tapestry of glamour and festivity against the backdrop of Hollywood's golden age. At the heart of this grandeur was, of course, Marion Davies, whose charisma and hospitality knew no bounds. The Beach House became the epicenter of high society, frequented by the likes of Charlie Chaplin, Louis B. Mayer, Samuel Goldwyn, Greta Garbo and Clark Gable. And these were not mere social gatherings, but elaborate spectacles, where each event outshone the last. Davies's legendary costume parties, particularly, became synonymous with Hollywood's elite extravagance. Yet, the Beach House's allure extended beyond its grand parties. During the tumultuous years of the Great Depression, Davies transformed her home into a sanctuary for those in the film industry facing hardship. Her altruistic spirit shone brightly as she offered meals and aid, often discreetly handing off jewellery and cash to her less fortunate guests. This act of generosity not only solidified the Beach House's status within the community, but also showcased Davies's caring and considerate nature. Therefore, the architectural splendor of the Beach House, combined with Davies's innate flair for hospitality, rendered the mansion a beacon of hope and unity. Her gatherings transcended mere social frivolity. They fostered a sense of camaraderie and support during an era marked by economic and social upheaval. Thus, by the late 1930s, the Beach House had earned the moniker Versailles of Hollywood, a fitting tribute to its cultural and historical significance. And Davies's personal life particularly her long-standing relationship with William Randolph Hearst, added another layer to the mansion's narrative. Despite the complexities of their liaison, such as Hearst being married the entire time, their bond endured until his passing in 1951. Therefore, Marion Davies, much more than just Hearst's companion, was a pivotal figure in the social fabric of Hollywood. Her hosting prowess extended from the grandiose Hearst Castle to the serene Beach House, each party a lavish affair attended by the era's most celebrated personalities, from film stars to international dignitaries. However, in the next decade, the even more volatile 1940s, both Marion's life and the fate of the illustrious Beach House would be pushed to their absolute breaking points. Now, in the 1940s, much like the rest of the world, Santa Monica's landscape was undergoing a profound transformation. The advent of World War II cast a shadow over the earlier period of extravagance in Golden Age Hollywood. The global conflict, marked by events like the attack on Pearl Harbor and the Battle of Iwo Jima, stirred fears of a Japanese invasion on American soil, and these tensions resonated even within the walls of Davies' palatial estate. Such pressing international concerns, coupled with the decline of Hearst's business empire and his declining health, formed a backdrop to the significant decisions Davies faced. Thus, in a move that reflected her astute financial acumen, Davies sold the Beach House in 1945 amidst a property tax dispute, marking the end of an era for the mansion. The property, in its next incarnation, was acquired in 1947 by hotelier Joseph Drown for $600,000, roughly $8.2 million in today's U.S. currency, who reimagined it as Ocean House, a luxurious hotel and exclusive beach club. Yet despite its inherent opulence, the hotel's success was fleeting, and the main mansion met its demise, crushed by demolition in 1956, a decision that faced opposition from local residents. Yet the Sand and Sea Club, a part of the estate, continued to thrive. The narrative of the estate took another turn when the state of California purchased it in 1960, repurposing the land into a parking lot of all things. Although the Sand and Sea Club remained operational under the city of Santa Monica, the 1994 Northridge earthquake caused severe damage, leading to the site's eventual wholesale abandonment. However, in a remarkable twist of architectural fate, the Annenberg Foundation intervened in 2005 with a substantial financial investment, breathing new life into the site. This led to the birth of the Annenberg Community Beach House at Santa Monica State Beach in 2009, 
a laudable partnership between the Annenberg Foundation, California State Parks, and the city of Santa Monica, realized at a cost of approximately $30 million. Today, the site retains only the guest house and the main pool from its original architecture, serving as poignant reminders of its storied past. But the Annenberg Community Beach House stands as a harmonious blend of historical reverence and contemporary function, a public space that not only offers stunning ocean views, recreational facilities and event spaces, but also symbolizes the evolution of the property from a private enclave to a communal treasure. Indeed, this transformation from a private mansion to a public haven encapsulates the fluid nature of architectural history and cultural memory in Los Angeles. The Annenberg Community Beach House is therefore not just a physical space. It is a narrative of change, preservation and adaptation, holding within its walls tales of a past era of Hollywood glamour. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. What's your opinion on architecture in the Los Angeles area? Is it a legendary emblem of Hollywood's ability to adapt? Or is it a tragic case of bulldozing anything that doesn't keep with the times? We'll be curious to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this episode, why not click the video on screen to watch our deep dive on Marion Davies' other party palace, her lover William Randolph's legendary Hearst Castle. We'll see you over there, or in the community below. Thanks again for joining us here at Old Money Mansions, and cheers. Until next time.